The sun has left and forgotten me. It's dark, I cannot Your stories don't define you, but how you tell them will. Hi, I'm Sarah Elkins, your host and chief storymaker at Elkins Consulting. Whether you're telling business stories or personal stories, the way you share them has an impact on your internal messages and on the way people are receiving you. And the stories you tell about other people say more about you than they do about them. So today's guest you are going to enjoy, um, I know you're going to enjoy her stories, and she happens to be calling from Salt Lake City, Utah, which is not far from where I am here in Montana. I'd love to welcome Alicia Branham. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me on your show, Sarah. I really appreciate being here today. Absolutely. So um, I love to begin the conversation by asking my guest to share something about themselves that most people don't know about them. So uh, what this does is it gives our listeners some context for what they're going to hear later on. We have a tendency as people, especially now with social media and the, the ability to see one part of a person so easily without seeing the rest of the com- complexity of a person's life, we have a tendency to pigeonhole somebody from one interaction, one experience we have with them. And by asking this question and having you share something about yourself that most people don't know, we're offering our audience an opportunity to see a much broader picture of who you are. So do you have something that you could share with us? Sure, I do. Um, I have I had a couple of different thoughts with that. And so I, you know, I can either um, tell you something business wise, or I'll just tell you something um, that, you know, sometimes I really lack confidence in myself. So and that's something that um, I know may sound strange. um, But if you know me, and you work with me, that would probably shock you (laughs) to hear that. Well, um, I that is surprising, but I guess it's not uncommon. I think most of us have moments of self-consciousness where we wonder what the heck we're doing or whether, you know, the whole imposter phenomenon, is somebody going to figure out that I'm not all that? I think most of us struggle with that in some way, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's part of what makes us strong coaches for other people that struggle with it is that if we had it all figured out, then we wouldn't be able to relate to them and we wouldn't be continuing our own journey of self-discovery. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I could have led with a story about how I, um, you know, I lived in another country as a, as a teenager. Right. Um, but I felt that would be more authentic to have a conversation about that um, because I am a business owner and I've built something really big. And yet I, I have the I, I don't see it sometimes. Right. And I think maybe your listeners and others um, feel that way, too. Maybe you don't see the great thing you do in your life. Right. Or the the assets you are, or the the gift that God gave you. Right. You don't see it, even though. Everyone else around you sees it, (laughs) right? Oh my gosh. Yes. And that's another common thing that I've noticed is that there are are a few people in my life that have seen my magic before I saw it. You know, the ones like even my husband, he has always been my greatest champion, especially when I'm not so sure of myself. So um, I, I have my spouse and some incredible women in my life that have been great influences in that way. Who is, tell me a story of somebody who saw your magic before you saw it. I run a marketing firm and I niche down to a specific marketing niche, right? And so um, years ago, I applied for a job uh, to be a, a creative at a big manufacturer in the Carolinas. And that guy that hired me saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And because of that one man's vision and what he saw in me, I've created an entire life and career based on what someone saw in me. Um, And it's funny because he's someone that's, um, you know, controversial in my industry. You either love him or you hate him. 
right? <laughs> but I, uh -huh. I have a lot of, I have a lot of love for this person because um, they put me on a trajectory to a, a great life, a great career, a great industry. I work with incredible human beings and, and the things that I do. And so, you know, I, I know that sounds kind of odd or awkward, but it, it was someone in, in my professional career that I got hired for a job that he saw the potential in me, right? And so that just really made an impact on me as a person. Well, isn't that kind of the dream that most of us have, especially early in our careers, that somebody's going to see our greatness and help catapult us to that place? But so rarely do I hear people actually have that experience. So I, I love that you had that experience. Are you doing I, that for others? I do that as much as I can. <laughs> so mm -hmm. what, I, what I try and do, honestly, is I, if you're a client of mine, um, I don't just I don't just do the thing and leave. I am there for support. So I, I provide coaching to the clients that I serve. Um, small I deal with a lot of small businesses, and so you know the behind the scenes, the growth, the team, your systems, processes, and procedures, like all of those things are really a headache for, for most people. And so as mm -hmm. as I provide the services I do for the clients that I work with, I do try to be that that sounding board, that that voice of reason, that that friend that sees another business owner suffering or taking on too much or, you know, being the martyr for their own business when there's three other partners and you're going, hey, wait a minute here. <laughs> Let me help. <laughs> and right. So so that's the one thing that I do do with, with the people that I serve is I try to be that sounding board and that support system that you typically wouldn't find in like a marketing firm. Right. Because I I really care about people and I care about people's happiness and if I know you're stressed out or frustrated about something and there's something that I can shed light to for you to help you see things more clearly, then I'm going to do it because that's what I'm compelled to do. That's how I serve, right? I want everyone to, mm -hmm. to be happy and be at their best, right? And so it's important to me that, um, you know, that I actually give back in that way to the people that I work with. I, I, I love know, that. Back. You have to give, you yeah. can't make, and you have to give in, in more ways and just creative, right? So, yeah, I love that. I, I think about how much I try to give back because I've had such great experiences with certain people, but particularly I love to see what my sister can do and my brother, you know, I look at my siblings and I think, oh my gosh, this is, this is your magic. You need to work on this, you know, make this even better because you're already naturally gifted at it. And, um, we, of course, as, as a mother, I, I try to do that with my kids, but they don't always believe me. So, um, <laughs> I keep, I'm, I want to come back to this person who hired you and had this belief in you. How did you know? Like, I, I can tell you, I've had the, the opposite experience in my very last job before I started um, exclusively working for myself. I've always had a side hustle, but about, uh, it was 2018. I went exclusively self-employed. My boss at that time, I had told him that one of our departments had asked me to come and do a couple of, a couple of customer service workshops with this team, with this team. And my boss who had been working with me for three years, and I guess he wasn't necessarily on my hiring committee, but he had to approve the hiring. He was sure. the city manager. And he said, well, what makes you, uh, what did qualified, what makes you qualified to, to do that in this really insulting tone of voice? Wow. <laughs> and all I could think was, did you not read my resume? I mean, <laughs> do you not know what I did? He clearly didn't know what I did. And that incident really changed how I um, approach things with him to make sure that he understood what I was doing and how successful I was being at it. At that point, I just kind of had this assumption that he was seeing what I was doing for his company, for the for this community, our city. But when was a time where you realized he really saw you? So funny story. Um, he hired me and was gone four months later. So <laughs> the way I look at it is this. He, so I, I built up a, an entire marketing department, an in-house marketing department for a very large manufacturer in the Carolinas, right? And so when I got this job and hired by this man, he knew the needs 
of what needed to be done. And he's, I think he saw that I could fill those. Right. And so in being in a, an a aggressive go getter type of individual, like I never have a plan B, right. There's only plan A in my world. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I went after that position, like a bulldog. Like I just, I went after it hard. And, and when, when I originally started, you know, he, he invited me to, Every meeting, every every sales meeting, every 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 type of meeting there possibly was, so I could absorb as much as I could about the company. And I feel that I think he he saw my resume, um, he saw my skill set, and then I think it was me, like just me as an individual and my passion and my drive that helped to sell that. Um, but I actually kind of realized it after he left while I was building it, so I didn't realize it in his presence. I realized it long, long after he left. And then even as I started on my journey of entrepreneurship and I, I started my agency in 2017 and I and I serve this industry that, you know, the, him and I both work in, you know, I've, I've, I've re- repeatedly reached out to him and thanked him for seeing something in me and to introducing me to an industry that was so incredible and so, so rich with, with opportunity and incredible human beings that I get to work with on a regular basis. And it's, and it's very relationship based. And because I don't come a big, I don't come from a big family and I don't have any siblings. Um, I, I make family where I have friends, right? Like a lot of us do when you, when you're like me, <laughs> I can't be the only right. person with siblings, right? Right. Oh no. <laughs> with your friends. And so I'm very fortunate that I have, I've been able to build a business, you know, you know, literally with some, you know, folks that are definitely my friends that I've known for, for several years since, you know, a lot of these folks since 2009. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, it just, you know, it provides me a lot of joy to work here. And it's because this one person saw something in me, saw the go-getter, saw that drive in me, you know, um, and I only mm-hmm. realized that after, right. I only realized that after right. like, great opportunity. So <laughs> I don't think that's unusual. I think we rarely see what we're getting at the time we're getting it. Exactly. I mean, it's yeah. so rare. Uh, it's, it's almost always looking in the rear view that we see these things. And I think why part of, why I'm so fascinated with this and why it's so important for us to share exactly these stories is that we can be that person and never find out. And as long as we are consciously supporting people, seeing their beauty, seeing what they bring to the table, we can be that person. And if we're not sharing those stories, people, they just don't see their impact, their potential impact. And it's not just somebody who hired you, that person brought you into all those meetings, by the way, brilliant. I mean, I don't know why that doesn't happen with every onboarding of a high level person, just have them come to every single meeting so that they can listen and understand the dynamics of the team and the organization and the business. But those people had to welcome you to a certain extent And every person in that room had the potential to help you see your greatness or help you, even if you couldn't see it, express it if you didn't know it was in yourself. Does that make sense? It does, absolutely does, sure. Wow. I keep coming back to this man that, and I love the way that you presented it as he's kind of, he's controversial in your organ, in your field, in your industry. I, I, get that. And it's funny how, again, it comes back full circle to that first question. Tell me something about yourself that most people don't know. In order to get a broader vision of somebody, um, if people were only hearing the negative side of this person and not hearing your story, then they're only getting a small piece of that picture. It's like putting a jigsaw to puzzle together with 5% of the pieces. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ah, that's so cool. So um, I, what I love to do so that our audience knows what you do and knows how to support you or hire you or reach out to you is for you to tell us what you do without telling us what you do. So in other words, tell a story of a recent experience with clients or with your staff that demonstrates your expertise and personality. Okay, I'll go for a sales call I had this morning because oh, it just- excellent. <laughs> Yay. 
And so in the lanes I run, I, I'm an industry expert at what I do. So because of that man that let me sit in all these meetings, I got to learn so much about the industries I serve, uh, how these folks go to market, just all the political behind the scenes, everything, everything that you would want someone on your team to do. Uh, or to to be familiar with, right? And so um, I had a sales call this morning with a marketing manager for a manufacturer that I talked to their, I talked to someone superior to them a few weeks ago that I met at an event and I know them because I have like three clients that sell this product line, right? So I, you know, I kind of, when I got a chance to meet that person in, in person, I was like, hey, how are you? You you deal with this and da, da, da. And he reached out to me and then it led to conversations where, hey, talk to our marketing manager. We really need additional help inside of our agency or inside of our, 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 our organization. And so it was great. Great for me is that um, I, in my business, what I get to do is I get to go behind the scenes to like an organization who's a manufacturer that makes, you know, products for the plumbing industry, heating, things like that, right? So I get to go and be there behind the scenes and support their marketing team, which are usually underfunded, right? Or short staff or one right. person buy the items that's just not realistic, right? And so right. what I love to do is I we come in and I I provide that marketing strategy, that creative, that branding, that you know the website development, the you know anything and everything that's forward facing, and especially in nowadays, like everything's forward facing because no matter of your income level or your status or where you're located in the world, anyone can look you up in five seconds on their phone. End of right. story. So it's really mm-hmm. important that, you know, whatever you put out there really needs to represent you, your business, your brand, your messaging appropriately, right? And not, you know, Jimmy rigged or not done correctly, especially if you, you know, if your products aren't like 50 cents, right? They're expensive. Right. So, and right. so it, if it it's great. not a commodity. Right. So it was great for me to be able to be on a call today with a junior marketing manager who's been in his position, but doesn't have a lot of support and being able to provide him with that. Hey, I get you. I get what you're going through. I get the demands placed on you. And we can be that support vehicle for you as you go about building, you know, the brand and your position, because you can only do so much. And he's expected to do all of these things on his own. And my team can come in and, you know, we even do 3D modeling, right? So if they have a how-to video on some product of theirs, you know, with specific file types from them. You know, my 3D guy can put together incredible animations and make Pixar look like scrubs. I don't know. So <laughs> I love, awesome. I love being able to be that um that support behind the scenes for a lot of the clients that I work with, right? And so this call that I had this today, the sales call was a was like the last stage of me getting in the door of this location under the um under the guise or under the, the not guise, but under the, the goals of helping their marketing manager be better and helping him, you know, grow, you know, his, his little side, his little piece of the puzzle at that organization, you know, without, you know, having that organization having to hire like six employees to make those things happen that they need and being able to Mm -hmm. show him what we do currently for other manufacturers and how we're using AI and other tech to, you know, level things up for people. Um, It made me really happy because I'm, I'm incredible at what I do. And I love, you know, taking that and and taking my marketing strategy and the things that make me really dynamic as a professional and bringing that to your cause your business your whatever your whatever your challenge is I've got a solution for you (laughs) I love that so when you got off the call what was what was kind of the feeling that you got from your your new client does it was he filled with relief I think it was relief because, you know, they, they're expected. And I know they, because I was him, I was him before. Right. Right? Yeah, I, I right. before so I could, I could easily empathize with everything he's going through. Right. And, and, you know, his, his passion is, is video, right? So he'll, he'll, he does video and animation. So that's the one thing that he likes, but he's expected to do all the rest. And there's, it just, it is a challenge to do all of that in, in manage all the projects and the events and everything. And so I think I gave him, 
him a, a great uh, window slash opportunity to work with a seasoned professional that speaks his language, the industry. I know all the all the publishers. I know all the all the the different types of meetings that go on. You know, you know, mm-hmm. annually, regionally for everything. So I'm just so versed in what we do and what he does that it's for him. I I know he left that meeting going, man, I've got, I've got help coming because his boss has already blessed me and said, Hey, I, I want to work with this. I I think you need to talk to this woman. So it's exciting. Wow. I know it's going to turn into a great opportunity for business for me. Um, so that's exciting. Right. And you get to be that person for this young man, this, uh, I don't know how young he is, but for this person who is just um, really focused on one thing, you get to help him shine his magic yes. while you take care of the things that are not in his wheelhouse. I just, you know, you're you're being a mentor for him in some ways. Exactly, exactly. And I did this for another organization too. So I have another organization that I serve and their marketing manager when she was junior and they brought her up. So they promoted from within. And I did, I worked with her on, you know, how to, you know, how to, how to work uh, with her superiors, how to get buy-in on different marketing initiatives or creatives that were being put forth, right? Because a lot, a lot of times when we deal with big business or big organizations, a lot of some things, unfortunately, are decision by committee. And so you've got to right. learn how to navigate <laughs> the waters of how do you navigate decision by committee and how do you, how do you lead people to actually do what you want them to do, what needs to be done versus what they feel needs to be done. Because sometimes you, you definitely know better than who you're doing that work for, because that's kind of why they hired right. you. Um, you know, <laughs> exactly. Just learning, just learning that tightrope dancing between, right? So I, I feel um, I feel really great about this opportunity to get to do this again for this, this gentleman right here. Oh, so. I love this. There's one thing that keeps popping back up into my head is um, I host a conference called No Longer Virtual, and the seventh one is coming up pretty soon. And I remember uh, at one of them, I think it was in Atlanta in 2019, um, Beard and Bowler is a a video agency um, in the Northeast, just fantastic people. Jason Ellinger, Ellinger? I'm, anyway, I'm butchering this. But anyway, one of the things he and his business partner at the time shared was when you are working with a client that you don't need to be the hero. You want to let them be the hero. That's your job is to have your client be the hero and everyone needs a guide. There's, you know, the guide has such an important role and the way you just shared these two stories make me feel like you totally get that, that you aren't the hero. You're not swooping in and fixing everything. You're the guide so that they can shine and do their job really well and learn the way that you got to learn. Exactly. And, and to be honest with you, I, t- I tend to handle all my clients that way. And so a, a lot of the folks that I serve, they sell, um, you know, they sell these products in the industries that I'm in and, you know, they can pay commissions, right? And so everything that I do and everything that my team does, we're all overhead. So you really need to earn your keep, right? And so we, right. you know, we take away from their bottom line. So I, my goal as their marketing department is to make sure that they're 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 well served and that they're the the best messaging about them is put forward. So it's not just marketing the products that they represent, but marketing their agency, their strengths of their agency, what makes them stand out because. You know, I I try to build little mini rock stars, right? Little rock stars that are mm-hmm. that are crushing their region, right? That are crushing their state, that are crushing that crushing the territories that they're selling in. Where it's like, now nah, I want to work with Dan because Dan's a shiz, and he him and his team never let me down, and they sell the best products. And I don't care if Dan goes to another company, I'm going, I'm sticking with Dan, right? And so right. I I tend, to, I tend to deal with a lot of business to business people, and so I, I don't deal with a lot of business to consumer, even though I do help people in that lane. But a lot of the folks that I'm serving, like they they are cultivating and trying to maintain these really high level relationships while also being on the lookout for new relationships that they could have a new opportunity to serve a different manufacturer right because you just it's a it's a really it's a really interesting industry and i feel grateful that i have the knowledge and expertise to be able to 
serve up to each one of my clients to protect them and make sure that their businesses are are being handled, you know, accordingly, that they've got a succession plan in place. Cause I'll even talk to them, hey, what do you, you know, what's your plan, right? Cause some people don't think about those things. And a right. lot of the serve our family run, sometimes our second or third generation run, right? Or you've got partners that buy their way in and out. And so some of these organizations have been around, you know, 45, 55, 60 years, right? And I'm like, to me, it's like, wow, we're funny. I work in an industry where all these family legacies and I don't have any family legacies. So it's kind of interesting. I <laughs> other people's family legacies. <laughs> so, well, you know, what I'm hearing, what I've been hearing through as a thread, from the very beginning of this conversation is that your what you are magic at is building community wherever you are you create an environment where people feel like they belong that they are part of a community even if it's at work and maybe they do have family but there's there's something different about having a professional community that also feels close and caring, if not loving. So that's the thread I'm hearing. So your magic definitely comes from your building of relationships and community within organizations and also within the industry. I mean, how many people have their customers tell them they love them? And I have have customers (laughs) tell me they love me. Grown men that don't, that this is a platonic thing, you hear me? And so right. <laughs> the type of relationships that I build where I genuinely love our clients and when you work with me, your family, because I care about your bottom line. And and I know most small businesses can't afford overhead like people like me, right? We're, 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 we're a lot of money, right? And so mm-hmm. I always try to be fair with the people that I work with and I I represent them in the best way that we possibly can and I, in the most effective ways that we can, right? To, to mitigate those expenses for them, right? And also obviously still, you know, make money because I have to. I've learned to, I, one thing I've learned in my life is to value myself more. And so that's where the conversation of, did you know that I don't have confidence in myself? <laughs> it's like a big <laughs> That's like a big, like, that's like a, wow, are you serious? Because if you work with me and you know anything about me, um, you would never think that. And my husband is the only person who maybe knows that about me, <laughs> right? right? Well, I, you know, I as a strengths finder coach, one of the things that is very clear to me when I hear your story like this is that it's situational. You are as confident as anyone on the planet when it comes to what you do, your one-to-one conversation with that potential client this morning, that you are absolutely sure that you are going to bring the best possible service to that man and that organization. Maybe outside of that situationally, your confidence may waver, but when it comes to what you know that you know, there's no doubt in my mind that, that that's clear. Thank you. Appreciate that. I can't well, be the been on a plane who doesn't see our worth or doesn't like, you know, it's so, so, so the real truth is, is that every big, huge business leader out there, they all have that little, that little pang of, am I doing this right? Am I, am I really this person? Did I really build this big thing? Right. I'll give you, right. a, I'll give you an example. I, I happen to have a, um, I happen to have a score mentor. So have you ever heard of the score program? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I happen to have the score mentor. So talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to put myself to, I'm going to make me look like nothing right now. So <laughs> he's a really nice guy. I, he's very, very nice. And I've, I've talked to him maybe a half of a dozen times. Right. So it's, it's a new relationship. And I happen to bring up the fact that I have a hard time seeing the things I've built, right? Like a lot of us, right. We don't see the good that we've done, right. Where mm-hmm. for whatever reason, because we're still striving for the next thing. That's why. Right, or, or we're raised to not feel that way. So I was raised as, as the way I was raised. I was raised to not be proud of anything that I've done. It's a sin, right? And et cetera. So he tells me, yeah, you know, I don't have a big ego. So I get how you feel. It, it reminds me of the time that um, my business landed as number four on Inc. Magazine's top 500 fastest growing businesses of America. And it was nothing to me. I was like, oh, that's nice. He said, I think we did one social media post about it and that's it. And they went <laughs> 254 employees and he acted like it was nothing. So guess what? 
<laughs> we're all there. I just That's saw a quote lighting. about that. I I just saw a quote about that. Um, Levy, what's his name? Levy from uh, the Dan TV Levy? show. Dan Levy? So, th- from the TV show. Yeah. So he said, um, just so you know, nobody has it all figured out. <laughs> don't, don't fool yourself into thinking that other people have it all figured out because we're all just doing the best we can from moment to moment. It's true. And I was very taken aback by that. I, and, and I had no idea that this gentleman was also my, my score mentor. I was like, so for me, it was also like a, it was a big aha moment of like, here is a, here is a, you know, here is a professional, successful, you know, man um, that even has it worse than me. Like, am I, <laughs> am I well, and- I'm a foreign, but it's like, I think I, I don't know. I, it was very relatable and I was very humbled by it. <laughs> yes. Like, and it was so, it was kind of him to share that with you. What? I mean, that, that there's a kindness and an authenticity and vulnerability about it. And for our listeners, SCORE is a business resource that most communities have regionally, um, and they provide mentors for business owners and entrepreneurs. So um, we can have a link to the National SCORE website in the show notes associated with this podcast at elkinsconsulting.com, if you're curious. They've been a help to me. And it, and yes. The reason that I actually got into it, I don't know if you're a Clubhouse person or not, but I, I Clubhouse is a social audio app for your listeners that may not be familiar. So a whole other type of social media out there is actually social audio. And so mm-hmm. most marketing people or other business professionals are aware and, and some aren't. Um, but I've, I've learned a lot from being on Clubhouse. And that has actually been a that, that is something else that really helped me change a lot of things about me is, is, is those communities and the places that I put myself in. And it's really taught me a lot about, about growth. And it's how I really put myself in different situations to learn, to be of service to others. Right. And so that's been mm-hmm. exciting for me um, as a person to be, have a journey on clubhouse for three years. I've been on there. Well, that's, that's a good resource. My, my platform of choice has been LinkedIn for gosh, 12 years or something like that. So I know what you mean about finding the community that helps you grow and learn more and in order to improve whatever you want to do. So funny you say that LinkedIn is my primary vehicle of choice to do business. And I do my learning on Clubhouse. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I do all of my, even though I'm, I'm on Instagram and I have a whole other life on Instagram, my business life and the people that I, I seek are definitely, I've been, I've been on LinkedIn for a long time, just like you. Right. So that's definitely yep. do most of my business. Um, but the things that I've learned off of Clubhouse have been really interesting, um, really fascinating for me. Um, it put me in a lot of different opportunities to, you know, grow and, um, mm-hmm you know, to meet different people and, and listen to different stories and, and, and hear about other business owners plights and just everything. It's been, it's been really interesting. So I, if, that's people- so good to hear um, listeners. We have a lot of resources out there. If you want to be self-reflective, if you want to grow, there are a lot of resources out there. I, I am not on clubhouse, but I understand that it is a good resource. Um, if you're interested in LinkedIn, Definitely connect with me and and with all of my guests on on this podcast. Almost all of them have been on LinkedIn. And um, there are so many resources out there. So if you're curious, don't stop looking. Find the platform that works for you. So let's... score mentor because there's a woman in a community that I listen to and she said that she's now uh someone asked her to be a score mentor in the Virginia area and she's like the youngest like mentor that they have and she's a little intimidated slash honored by the same thing and so she motivated me to reach out to my local score <laughs> so, oh that's brilliant I love that that's perfect all right I cut you off <laughs> no 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 that's that was great. I I was curious about that. So thank you. And that's the thing about our social media platforms is that it, when you interact on them, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So when you interact on these platforms as a real person, not just promoting your own stuff and promoting your own work, but building community and relationships, you level the playing field. So there are so many people that you can meet on these platforms that you would never get five minutes with 
if you didn't build a relationship with them through these platforms. My example is Whitney Johnson, who wrote Building Your A-Team and Disrupt Yourself, fantastic books that have been game changers for me and some of my clients. I reached out to her via LinkedIn after following her work, commenting on her posts, sharing her posts and tagging her on them. So it really is a way to level the playing field. So I encourage you listeners to find your platform. They're not all the same. Find the one where you feel comfortable. That's right. Absolutely. So let's let's um, wrap this up and come full circle. You mentioned that you were going to tell a story about, uh, was it study abroad or moving somewhere oh, okay. out of the country? I want to hear this before we wrap up. Sure thing. When so my interesting mother's story is that which is something no one ever talks about or you hear about is that I had I had reverse immigration in this country and this is what I mean. So my dad was born and raised in Uruguay, which is in South America. For those that aren't familiar with geography, because I had to look it up because I didn't know where that was. And um, um, when I was 15, my parents thought it'd be really great to pull me out of school after I just got out of Catholic school from preschool to eighth grade. Um, and so sophomore in high school, we moved to Montevideo, Uruguay to live. When I moved there, I didn't speak any Spanish at all. I went to a British school and I needed to learn to speak Spanish really quickly because I wasn't able to graduate from high school unless I was able to speak and write and have an oral exam in, on Macbeth in Spanish. <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh, that's hard. Yeah. So when I when I first moved there in the eighties, uh, there was a military government, which was frightening for a little girl from New Hampshire. I was I'm born and raised in Manchester, New Hampshire, until that time. Uh, so I really mm -hmm. had no other experience or anything. I didn't have I didn't know anything. And so when we moved there, it was a little nerve wracking because it was a lot of nerve wracking because there was a military government and there were, you know, military people out with guns. And I'm not used to seeing that in the United States. We don't have people with guns on corners. Right. And then right. After, uh, and then after like six months of being there, they went from a military government to a democracy. I'm like, OK, great. I, under I understand democracy. Right. I know I knew that in school. Um, but the three political political parties were the Democrats, the socialists, and the communists. Pick one. And so <laughs> here I am in our house, right? We're living in our house and I'm watching people vying for their political party and trucks driving down the road with the hammer and sickle flag off the back. And I'm thinking to myself, wasn't I taught that's evil? And so it was <laughs> our like high school experience, but it did teach me uh, about other parts of the world. I went to school with people from all over the world. So from, from like, you know, I went to British school. So I went to school with diplomats and bankers kids. And, you know, I'm just a, like a little girl from New Hampshire with average parents and nothing. And I'm going to school with <laughs> people that are like, you know, their father's like general in the South African army and he's stationed in Uruguay for whatever reason. And they live in a McMahon, right? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. What a great story. I'm so glad you shared that. And it's not hard to see how that experience impacted how you could, how you create community and why you're so darn good at it. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So I, I just love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm glad I asked. That's a great story. I bet we could dive much deeper into that and how it affects who you are now. But that will be a conversation for another time. Absolutely. This has been an absolute treat. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. I really appreciate you having me on. You have been wonderful. It's been really great to get to know you. It's been a pleasure. Listeners, it's your turn. What is your magic? Maybe it's time to ask somebody who knows you, that you trust, that really sees the best in you. Ask them what you bring to the table that's different from other people and find a way to use that every single day. Because the more you work on that, the more that gift that biologically, genetically, environmentally was given to you becomes an actual talent. That's where you find the most meaning and purpose in your days is by using that. So I'll be really curious to hear what you discover. Please don't hesitate to shoot me an email or get in touch with me via LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook. And all of 
The information that you heard from this conversation will be in the show notes associated with this episode at elkinsconsulting.com. Thanks for listening. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile.